Dennis, great to have you in to discuss this. On a very yeah. apt day, we're just getting this breaking news from right. Donald Trump, promising more jobs, yeah. largely from some of the phone companies here in the United States and technology giants. But there is not just impediments to globalization, perhaps limiting trade, forcing companies to rehire back in the US right. in terms of manufacturing. But what about the robot element of all of this? This, sure. this is something Silicon Valley is really talking about, but maybe not the rest of the population. Yeah, I think uh, especially in 2016, we've heard a lot of the discussion uh, form around uh, trade policy, globalization and immigration. But in reality, if you look at the, the numbers, uh, a lot of the job displacement, displacement actually comes from technology automation. Let's take uh, U.S. manufacturing as, as an example. Manufacturing as an industry within the U.S., if you look at the total output volume, is actually near its all-time high. But over the course of the last several decades, the actual number of people that uh, that industry has employed is actually mm. down over 7 million jobs. And the vast majority of that is actually due to technology automation, not necessarily from globalization. So productivity seems to be on the up, thanks, yeah. to, Matt, thanks to robotics. And there was a, a great study done a few years ago coming out of Oxford saying that almost half U.S. jobs are actually at risk yeah. due to machines. Are we going through perhaps a bit of a Bill Gates situation here where this actually underestimating what might happen in the short term, underestimating what happen, might happen in longer term. In fact, could this be more than half of the jobs or indeed is this not? What, what do you think of the numbers? I actually think it's going to be underestimated. I think it's one of those things where technology is uh, a, a general trend. It tends to accelerate. It's different mm. from, say, immigration policy or globalization where you can create some public policies to stem it or to change it. Whereas in technology, if you think about it, not only does it tend to accelerate faster, you can't uninvent things. So you, if you think about the, the nature and the pace of change, things are always going to uh, appear a little bit faster than we expect them to. So you think actually shorter than Oxford at the moment put out, look, in the next decade or two, you think it could be sooner than that? It definitely could be. And think about just this year alone, some of the, the big uh, items that we were discussing in, uh, in sort of the mainstream. One was around autonomous vehicles. That's going to have a huge impact on the trucking industry, which mm. is one of the biggest employers within the U.S. And the other one is around self-serve kiosks and all sorts of quick-serve restaurants. I mean between those two, we're talking millions and millions of jobs that could be affected. And that's just on the low end with more routine work. And as technology gets a little bit more powerful, you, gotta, you have to think that it's going to be able to displace uh, more high-end jobs as well. So of course, Udemy, what you helm yeah. as CEO, is helping reskill or upskill workers. Is this what the answer is? Does the government sure. say Donald Trump coming in in just less than a month, will we see a focus on reskilling? Or actually, should there be a larger safety net for those who can't be, potentially? Yeah. Well, I think it's a combination of a bunch of different things, but for sure, retraining and education has to be part of the, that, that conversation, uh, and that's certainly what we do. Um, so uh, if you think about it, the, there are two things that we think about. The first thing is this notion of lifelong learning. So people are working a little bit longer. A lot of the, the conversation around education is education really only in the early stages of an individual's life, but if you think about it, because the world of work is changing so quickly. People need to constantly learn new skills. So that's one piece. And the second piece is the most important valuable skill that an individual can have going forward is the ability to learn something new because it's mm. going to be really, really difficult to predict the future world of work. Dennis, you're coming in here and you're talking about this. Yeah. I want to know how much in 2017 will some of the startups, of course, we've seen some of the some of the fighting back from particularly disrupted industries who've seen the effects worldwide, not just here in the United States, but in Germany, in the United Kingdom, taxi right. companies fighting off the likes of Uber. But right. change is coming. You talk about this fourth industrial sort of revolution. Sure. Do startups and the companies that are doing the disrupting need to talk out more about this and talk about the ways in which people can be helped who might indeed lose their jobs? Yes, absolutely. I think that needs to be part of the broader conversation. I think it's a little bit different from uh, an education standpoint insofar as uh, lifelong learning is really a new segment if, mm -hmm. of education because in the past, most people think of education in sort of the early years, whether it's K through 12, traditional higher education, if you're lucky enough to have a degree or diploma, they really didn't consider what happens afterwards. And, this, and again, that goes back to this notion of lifelong learning. The, the need to constantly reskill and upskill uh, the, the skills that you do have in order to stay relevant. 